We've forgotten sometimes, I think, that, that we are part of nature. So what we do to the world around us, we are doing totally to ourselves. We can't go on, I think, equivocating on this and just expect us to test the world ultimately to destruction before you can prove that you have destroyed it. It is climate change. That's pointless to me. There is life after apparent death from the current conventional approach. We've got to come together as a world on this. I feel very strongly that we have to develop a, an approach which, by putting nature at the center of the whole process, what profit we make, we have to also make a profit for nature by putting something back. So my and your children and grandchildren can have some kind of reasonable future. At the moment, we are literally compromising it. We can't go on. You know, now with all the ice cap melting completely. I mean, this is terrifying to me. It always has been. I mean, I know that all these industries have obviously had to focus on dealing with the immediate impacts of this horrendous pandemic. But the fascinating thing is, I think a lot of people have still wanted, fortunately, to focus on the green recovery from all this. It was really from the 1960s onwards when suddenly all sorts of things were being abandoned left, right and center. I remember watching in horror as you know, hedgerows were grabbed up and trees were cut down and all the marvelous places I'd known when I was young, you know, the wildflower meadows and the wetland areas and so on were being plowed up, you know, because it was supposed to be more efficient and productive. It upset me deeply because it seemed to me it was all going too far, too fast. And if you go too far one way, inevitably, there has to become a moment when you have to rebalance it. If science has taught us anything, it is that the environment is full of uncertainty. The race in which we are all engaged now is to restore harmony to the forces of nature. Do we want to go down in history as the people who did nothing? I thought I was being perfectly reasonable about it, but oh no, it was considered as the most appalling thing anybody could ever suggest. Thank you, Liz. Just for suggesting, for instance, that you should mix affordable housing with private housing, or how do you actually design a system of farming which is agroecological? In other words, you know, it puts the biodiversity and natural part at the center of the whole operation. I don't know, it was sort of intuitive, I suppose. I, I just felt it deep down in myself that this was the, the only way at the end of the day. And I felt, I don't know, I just felt it was otherwise going to fall apart. Everything was being designed, and still is in many ways, to battle against nature and to suppress and destroy, to exploit. But it may have gone a little bit too far in terms of the exploitation we've imposed on the natural world. Which I suppose you could get away with for a certain amount of time because it wasn't apparent that we were doing lasting damage. As with carbon emissions, from all the fossil fuels we burn in every form or other. It took people a long time to recognize that this was causing a huge problem in the atmosphere and warming our whole planet. And still people deny it. Until recently, nobody would have paid the slightest attention. But suddenly, because of the challenges we're now finding hitting us in the face, and the huge problems we've created, there's become an interest in these issues. I spent a lot of effort over my lifetime trying to bring people around the table with the Sustainable Markets Initiative, bring them together, industry by industry, to focus on how can we more rapidly decarbonize each industry, make the transition necessary, and actually find a much better way of doing things. Everything in nature, it's a finite resource. There's only a certain amount within the planetary boundary that we operate in. And the trouble now is that through this whole approach to partly to convenience 
we've forgotten that we have to live within the planetary boundaries. We have to make a real, integrated, global effort. At the moment, we've so degraded natural systems, ecosystems, biodiversity, that it's becoming increasingly impossible for nature to, to sustain us. At the moment, it's all take-take. Now we've reached the situation where we really need four planets like Earth to survive or to provide enough for everybody. And there is a better world out there. We can operate our industries far better. There is real hope, but we've just got to get our act together. And we've got to remember that the natural world is, is, is what sustains us. <laughs>